Okay, so preparing toddlers for piano lessons. Um, I figured that the people watching this probably have nieces, nephews, or are thinking about uh, having children, or maybe you have children. Um, so who has had piano lessons or violin lessons as a kid? Uh, can I just get a, people to raise their hands? A few, you, one, two, three, four, yeah. All right, so it's a fairly common thing. Um, so who quit by the age of eight? Because they were done, just, okay, ish, yeah. Another person, 12, quit by the age of 12, yeah, another, all right. And then by the end of high school, a lot of you will have quit music, unfortunately, raise your hands. Oh, no, everyone already quit, oh. That's okay. <laughs> oh, somebody else. Yeah, common thing. So, um, already did the intro. Primary instrument is bassoon. I do other ones, especially uh, trumpet, trombone, and flute, percussion. I won't pretend I'm good, but I enjoy it and I'm okay. Um, if you have questions, you can put it in the chat and I can answer you directly afterwards. So, we can't argue childhood piano lessons have benefits. A frustration tolerance, you know. You undertake a task, um, you work on it, you get over it. Growth and patience. Um, again, that sort of feeds in the last point. Uh, development, I'm talking um, brain because it uses both the left and right of the brain, um, as well as it develops dexterity and motor, motor skills. Um, artistic outlet explains itself and it benefits other school subjects such as math and reading. Okay, and uh, there you have a picture of a child prodigy, Jacob Velasquez. I th he must be like nine in that picture or something. All right, things you need to consider. Music is difficult. Well, we're talking about piano. My bad. Okay, so piano is difficult. It's rig um, it's the approach to teaching piano is rigorous. Um, uh, the when I uh, the point investment versus return, you have to consider that lessons are expensive, even group lessons. So if you got private lessons for like thirty or forty dollars a week, uh, that would be considered very cheap uh, for private music lessons with a professional teacher. And the teacher needs a lot of training, so you know they definitely deserve uh, the salary they're getting. Um, if I say isolating, it's because. Um, you're practicing, the kid is practicing on their own or they're one-on-one -on -one with a stranger. Maybe this, maybe they know this stranger well, but it's still, you know, them in front of the book and very controlled motions. Um, making sense of music is very difficult. Reading it, um, turning it into action and then slow progression because it's uh, piano, especially at the beginning, although you could say throughout the whole thing, um, there's quite the learning curve. Um, and many children quit out of frustration. Um, similar uh, parallels in uh, violin lessons, but I, can I can't only really talk about piano. Um, what I propose um, is um, piano exploration time. So the kid is allowed to explore and that, you know, you tell them, you know, you maybe limit the keys they can touch, musical toys, that they only play on the pentatonic scale so that they develop an ear for musical structure. And pentatonic, no matter what you do, it sounds good. So if you have a, if you have a xylophone, you just take the other keys out and all they can do is pentatonic. And the, it, it's really good for developing their ears in the beginning. Uh, obviously, piano bench for children, um, you want to develop um, hand independency and focus on musical beginner Okay, uh, that's a redundant sentence. I focus on beginner musical concepts. So that's like um, learning high and low, loud and soft, internalizing the beat, um, note lengths, rhythm, um, interactive, so um, call and response or uh, mimicking other um, music or sounds or rhythms by somebody else. And my philosophy, uh, why? so why kids... Oh, sorry, I guess, um, so what I propose, uh, the, the form that that takes would be uh, like group uh, group music lessons or people on xylophones or they have um, hand percussion instruments. Uh, my five minutes just ran out. Uh, 
I'm going to borrow another minute. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I love to talk. <laughs> uh, so my philosophy is that you have to weigh proficiency versus experience versus fun. Um, so you want to cater to their developmental level. Not saying that kids can't play piano, but they just might get a lot more fun um, out of other things that would eventually lead them to piano, which has so many benefits that I could have uh, five five minute uh, presentations on just that. Um, and if I want to talk about what the world needs, um, I'm sorry, uh, Jacob, the world doesn't <laughs> need more music majors like us. Really doesn't. What they need is people staying, keep doing music, no matter what form that takes. It could be a drum line. It could be uh, they play in a community band once a week. It could be that they just love music and keep going to um, concerts. We need music education. People just doing it um, for the love of art, for expression. Um, and the biggest point of my philosophy is that accessibility is the most important thing. So we're talking financially, we're also talking about what the kids are able to do, because if a kid drops out of piano, it might be out of frustration, which would make a lot of sense, because it's frustrating when you can't get certain things. But if you at least start with something that you can do that is just a bit challenging, and then build off from there, and build skills that lead to piano, and music reading especially, well, um, that's just so much better. You have fewer people that find it frustrating or feel alienated. Um, and uh, that's that. So uh, credits for the pictures. Uh, and uh, Kalia Switzer, she wrote a really good article um, for CBC that I just uh, appreciated her point of view on it. Uh, so that's my seven minute presentation. <laughs>